we went to Quantico in Virginia and, um, and uh, uh, where the FBI and the DEA, where they actually train. As part of the training, you simulate these, and it's like theater, actually, and, um, and these sort of improv experiments where you're given the, like, basically, like a mock setup of, like, a suburban block where um, you go and, um, and play out, like, ba like you're, 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 you're undercover as a drug dealer. <laughs> I remember Boyd went first on one of them. <laughs> And he came back, they drove him back in the car and, 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 and he got out of the car and he lit a cigarette in his hand, just like, oh, no. you know, trembling. Yeah. I had to go up, uh, you know, get in this car and they drive you up and like go knock on the door. And he kept on asking me to come into the house and come into the house and come into the house. And it was this incredible acting exercise yeah. because I was like, I am not going <laughs> in that fucking house. Join me in welcoming Pedro Pascal. Got like a row of liquids here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that we're going to have to like bend down to get a little under the weather, but not contagious. And very, you're dressed very for the rain. Gestated. Yes. Yes, I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, I did. I know. It's actually, I'm on theme. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on just, just a great few years. Um, this is an audience of your fellow SAG after actors. So I always like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? I got my SAG card. I did a short film that was a SAG short in 1996 in New York, which Ooh. was... Um, was that for New York or right. for short films? Was, yeah. <laughs> right Woo, on. short films. Is a, a short film called Burning Bridges, and um, and uh, Susan Shopmaker was the cast casting what, director. Really? So this was a long time. This was 1996. Didn't she just cast Iron Claw? I think so. Yeah. So, been around. And um, anyway, that was my Taft Hartley, and um, where and then the next job was a, a, a must join, and that would have been. I think um, a show called Good Versus Evil okay. on USA on the USA Network. Were you it was still like a in guest. school? At this point? I, I just I, I I was like a year after graduation. Okay. Wow. I was in school when I did the SAG short film. Okay. okay. Everybody was so jealous. <laughs> I was gonna say it's rare that like a short, especially back then, was was SAG. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah it was incredible. We shot it in Elizabeth, New Jersey, and. Um, Oh God, it was a, sort of a dream. I remember the copy that I had of it too was a VHS. And um, what's that? Can you explain for people? <laughs> um, we know what a VHS is. Uh, and I would just watch it repeatedly. Yeah. I, I don't do that anymore. But back then, I was like, "This may never happen again." Let me watch this twenty-seven times. Is it available somewhere? I would. I love short films. I'd I don't. Love to see I don't. These pop up. I don't know. I, I'm sure if I opened up some boxes, I would find the <laughs> the, the VHS copy that I had. Please, please put it online. <laughs> Bring that out next time you host Saturday Night Live. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I actually um, want to go back to the beginning because I, I'm always fascinated about how actors sort of fall in love with the craft. Um, because I know that by the time you were 11, you'd already traveled the world, um, Chile and, and Denmark and Texas, which is its own country, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, right on. <laughs> wow, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, and then yeah. Orange County, which is also its own country. <laughs> um, where did your love of acting begin? Were there performances that spoke to you or works of art? My dad was basically taking us to the movies um, at a very, very early age on a regular basis. They were very young parents and he loved movies. He's a doctor, but he loved going to the movies. And um, I mean, I would go on a school night all the time, like uh, as early as I can remember. Um, I don't know, being three years old and, um, and, and, and uh, it hasn't really changed since as far as my, uh, the amount uh, of, of movies I'm willing to sort of see. And um, so it imprinted itself very early, the, the, the uh, world of um, movies. And then we got cable television, which to me was, are we allowed to curse? Is that oh, offensive? Oh yes, this is actors. Will I lose votes if I curse? <laughs> 
Um, I just thought it was a fucking miracle. Yeah. When we had cable TV, because it was like at home, and there weren't any commercial breaks, and it wasn't being edited. It, it wasn't none of it was getting censored. I, I I remember perfectly just being like, this can't be real. Mm -mm. And um, so obviously this was part of just my development and my education. So it, it, it a very an, an, a fantasy kind of um, uh, uh, imprinted itself very early in my development. And um, and and I started to say that's what I wanted to do. Really? Yeah. And um, like at age, you know, like. I maybe before I was six years old, I was wow. saying that I wanted to be a dentist, but <laughs> but it 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 became I want to be in movies, um, and it didn't it didn't really change. And I think that my parents, you know, they didn't take it seriously, but they took it seriously as soon as it became a hobby that kept me out of the house. Mm. Um, I was uh, out of, like that kept me away from the television. Um, because I was a swimmer, and we were in Texas, and um, and I I did swimming as a child, and I was very good at it, and then it became competitive swimming, and then year-round swimming, and then when we moved to California, I, I I I literally remember telling my mother, you know, we're in California, I need, you know, I want to go to acting classes. Yeah, she's like, she found some sort of summer repertory program at South Coast Repertory in Costa Mesa. And um, and then that when it became this kind of practical thing that I could um, focus on and um, and and basically like a hobby, it didn't stop. You know, mm -hmm. it started there. And then we found a Laguna Playhouse in Laguna Beach. Yeah. And, um, Right on. I, I, I found out about an audition. They were doing a children's theater production of a play called Wiley and the Hairy Man. And I was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go and audition. It was an open casting. Wow. And um, I had to convince my mother to drive me just to drop me off at this day long audition process for this children's play. And it's so a chorus line, they did like, <laughs> you know, you do like rounds, you know, and you get cut. And then Oof. I didn't get cut, and then I didn't get cut, and then I didn't get cut, and then I got the lead in the play. You booked it. I Was that your it. first ever audition? The first ever. Well, wow. uh, thank you very much. They they're actually they actually it, hate you right it now. Miss it right. right. Well. <laughs> It was misinformation, I'll tell you that much. It didn't happen again for a very, very, very long time. You're like, um, this is easy. Yeah, exactly. I was like, see, I told you I was meant to do this. And um, and and basically, I can imagine that for my parents that were, whatever it is, do something. They were, they're super into the arts, but they weren't particularly, not, neither were, um, my mother was a psychologist, my father as a doctor and and um and they 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 just didn't deter me from it they they wow. they they were kind of grateful that it occupied so much of my attention and you went to the Orange County School of the Arts which yep. is a charter school for for performance um this may sound like a silly question or maybe not but is there like a a type of method they teach there or is it just sort of everything you could want to know about performance well the truth is i don't know <laughs> And circumstantially, so I was, I was in, we were in Orange County and, um, I think I would have been starting high school within my district and, um, I wasn't really fitting in, uh, I was going to, the school was Corona Del Mar and it's from seventh to 12th grade and I had a very rough seventh and eighth grade. And so my mother started to kind of, um, look for anything basically to like, um, uh, I didn't get into the private schools. Oh, I didn't have good enough grades. Okay, and so she. I didn't know that mattered. I guess it did. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just remember doing like an interview for a private school and um, and it not going well, and my mother being like offended and being like, "Fuck that school." <laughs> and um, and uh, and um, and then she found out about this uh, Orange County High School of the Arts at the time was in Los Alamitos because now it's in Santa Ana. It's its mm -hmm. own school. Um, at the time, it was a program that you needed to audition. And if you got into, then you were a allowed to attend the public school, Los Alamitos High School. 
So I commuted 40 minutes to go to um, uh, school, which was a nightmare for my parents in the first two years. But then I got a driver's license and they were like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> they drove you every day? No, minutes? we had a carpool. Okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> we would meet up at, at, at the mall south at South Coast Rep. The South Coast Plaza. Oh, I know it well. In the in the in the parking lot. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. I mean, people you knew. God, I'm right? really doing a deep dive. <laughs> I haven't thought or talked about these things ever. <laughs> well, I'm fascinated, and also when you're talking about Orange County, you're making it sound like it's all close together, but it is not. No, Orange it's very County sprawling. is big. Yeah. 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 So I, I can just imagine when you're doing this play at Laguna, that's that's probably a commute too. Laguna was close. Okay. Yes. And I also had some nerdy friends that were, um, it was all carpool. We were all kind of banding together and there weren't a lot of theater kids, you know, um, and, uh, you find each other, you know, and, um, and, and that was what was happening. It was sort of like a, you know, a, a friend of mine that loved the Rocky Horror Picture Show knew about this audition at the Laguna Playhouse, and we just all kind of protected each other through this love of 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 theater and movies. Were you doing plays in school? Like, what were some of the roles? Is it the classics like Arsenic and Old Lace, where you draw the old lines? In, in the performing arts program, the performing arts program was musical theater, and I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, they had a, a dance. Uh, instrumental visual arts and um, our department was the musical theater department I could not sing my audition song was um, one from oh, from, from a chorus <laughs> a line on the nose yeah 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 exactly <laughs> oh god I can't even imagine I don't even know how I got into the school because I, I and and really my freshman year because it was such early days for the school um we really kind of pioneered the yeah. the drama department i think that we kind of got them by my junior year we got them to do a drama production um as part of their season because every year was like two different musical theater mm-hmm. and the, i did get a, i did get cast as yonkers and gypsy no way! Yes. Oh yes. my god! Now, th- does a tape I, exist of that? Because I, I, I don't know. We'll find, <laughs> it'll come out. It'll all come out <laughs> if things keep going well. And then I know you attended the New York University Tisch School of the Arts, which right. I always have to mention. They rejected me. Um, did they? They did harshly. Um, Idiots. <laughs> well, clearly, I think they knew what they were doing. Um, but why that school? What What was it about that one that spoke to you? I wanted to go to New York. Yeah. I wanted to, at that point I had fallen in love with theater. I I had started to um, just consume uh, plays like it was television almost, you know, um, again, I think that it had a lot to do with, I think it was, a, 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 a it, well, I don't think, I know it was a huge, uh, survival mechanism at the time, uh, in terms of like, um, you know, being in an environment that you didn't fit in and then escaping and, and, and having this kind of like focus and just starting to really, um, fall in love with plays like really good plays like yeah. I all the I've read all of the best stuff before I ended up I don't I have not continued to nurture my mind unfortunately <laughs> I'm much lazier as an adult but there was definitely a period where I was like who's afraid of Virginia Woolf I remember Craig Lucas was a very popular mm. playwright at the time and I remember reading Blue Window and 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 uh Reckless and Prelude to a Kiss and that book, the Sam Shepard, seven plays yeah. by Sam Shepard, just fucking ate them. I was like, la, 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 la. and, um, and, uh, what was your question? I, I don't know. I'm just, you, <laughs> you took me back to every guy I dated in college for a second there. I was like, I remember these names. <laughs> well, similar with, with New York, did they teach a certain method or was it a, a little bit of everything? Um, the, the undergraduate program, as you know, is divided into different studio systems. Oh, I didn't know. See, I didn't go. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> um, they, they, so they have like the school of Strasbourg. Oh, um, cool. oh yeah. You said you, you asked why NYU. I wanted to go to New York and, and, and sort of like get to the source of where so many of these 
things seemed to have originated as far as North America was concerned. Um, you know, originally produced 1983 at the Helen Hayes Theater, you know, that kind of thing, and like get closer and closer to that, um, I don't know, that thing, and, and, um, and, and go to school where Al Pacino went to school, you know, um, the Strasbourg uh, Institute under NYU. There was no way that my parents would have let me go to um, acting school without it being a, a BFA. Oh, really? Yeah, there was no way. Um, and, uh, and so, so it, it, it was a liberal arts degree, but the idea was to get, it, to, get to Strasbourg. And what were you thinking your career was going to be at this point? Were you thinking it was mainly theater, or did you always know you wanted to do film and television? I think at, at, at that point, I must have really um, gotten into Mike Nichols and um, Diane Weiss and, and uh, very, very, very elevated taste <laughs> for a high schooler and um, must have been sort of recognizing that as like the kind of highest like the, the most inspiring kind of acting and I knew that it was sort of coming from theater and transitioning into uh, films and TV. When you were in New York, because uh, maybe I shouldn't assume, but I always think of like these poor, starving NYU students, um, were you able to see a lot of theater? No. Okay. No. It's expensive. It was so expensive. Yeah. Um, every once in a while, uh, they uh, we, we we would find a way to get like student price t tickets or um, invitations. But I did see some incredible stuff. I remember seeing Fiona Shaw do Wasteland. Oh my God. Um, I saw Anna Devere Smith's Twilight and and had experienced. Um, you know, was going to school in Los Alamitos, which was close to Long Beach, and so we, which so I was here for the 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 um, the riots that took place, and it was the context of which wasn't lost on me. I did see Angels in America. Wow, you're kidding! The original yeah. cast. I saw it at the Taper when oh, I was a yes, senior right. in high school. That was probably the most transformative thing that had happened to me. And, and, and definitely was like, you know, that to this day is one of the most incredible things yeah. that I've ever seen. And I think that just, again, showed me what it meant to be an artist of the theater and, and, and how that somehow to me was like this other level of, of, of work. And, um, we and I remember seeing really good stuff at South Coast Repertory oh, as well. Yeah. You know, I remember seeing the world premiere of a play called Search and Destroy by Howard Corder. And um I, I, I must have a fever. I'm in some sort of like <laughs> fugue st I'm like I, I can't believe You'll how much I'm babbling this about stuff. this. That's it's so impressive. I don't remember what I had for lunch today. <laughs> Neither do I. I remember <laughs> all of this better than I remember the day. <laughs> Uh, so were you still in school when you got your first agent? Were you, because uh, it seems like you started working while you were still in school. Or maybe um, that was just short films. I, I, there was a friend of mine in my um, uh, freshman acting class uh, named Eugene Bird, who's an, uh, an incredible actor working today. And um, he had started out as a child actor out of Philadelphia. And um, we became friends. And, uh, and he told me that I should meet his uh, manager. And he introduced me to his uh, manager and, um, and, I, and I started to get auditions like wow. while I was in school. I wasn't booking anything other than the short film, <laughs> but um, started to, I think, have that um, early fortune of actually getting into, um, uh, casting yeah. rooms. No, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I have to imagine you were a pretty good auditioner because once you graduated, it seemed like you started working quite a bit right out of the gate. I couldn't get arrested for really? a good year right out of college, which is why I ended up coming out to Los Angeles. And, um, and, uh, and, um, and then things started to kind of pick up a little quickly. And then there was another unfortunate detour 
um, with me going back to New York again, insisting that um, that it it happened through the theater. Mm. Big mistake. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> Isn't that you got into theater really through Los Angeles? Um, I ended up having a really incredible experience here in LA. Um, and doing a play in Long Beach. Yeah, of, I a production saw this. Of Orpha- you did yes, not. Yes, I did. It was, I moved out here in 99. It was the first, and I lived in Long Beach. So it was the first play I ever saw at ICT, right? <laughs> it was a big show. Don't be that surprised. You're shitting and me. And that the- that's, that, that's like a great theater. You are kidding yeah. me yeah, right now. Re- yeah, no. <laughs> well, that's crazy that you would have seen that. The first thing I ever saw when I moved out here. Yeah. That is insane. And I was thinking all L.A. theater is going to be like this. This is not the case. Wow. That is crazy. <laughs> I Because I, nor have I had an experience as, like, enriching as that in a 99-seat theater in Long Beach. Um, uh it's an international city theater, right? International yeah. city theater, yeah. Oh, by the way, I might have even voted for you for the Garland Award. Oh, my God. I, I won that award. In, I know you did. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I was with Backstage West then, but I, I was there for like 11 years. And I, I can't I remember, believe yeah. this. And, and I believe you won the LADCC Award. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, it's a great production. Such misinformation, like really misinforming <laughs> me early. I was like, boy, am I making this happen. <laughs> Really quickly. No, it was it was a huge acclaimed production. I remember. Oh wow, that's yeah. incredible. I would have thought that I I I feel like I would have just insisted on telling a story about this play, and your eyes would have glazed over and been <laughs> like, "Oh yeah, sure, you know, a play in Long Beach, yeah." Well, that was like transformative for you, you know. First of all, it's ICT. Secondly, it's Orphans, and yeah. you were Philip, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is a fantastic role. Yeah, it was incredible. Um, did you did you know like at the time like, that that like what how it would lucky be? you were? Yeah. No, I just knew the play. I loved the play, yeah. and I knew that I had I'd, I had this incredible long like the decision to come out to Los Angeles. I mourned very much not um, having. Uh, um, early professional theater uh, 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 experience, and um, and so this was it was it was a it was a an, a really big way of like satiating that longing. And so when I heard about the audition, I I, I went and and fought very hard to get that part, and um, and uh, and so that's it was it was it was it was, a, it was a, an audition and. Um, and 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 so uh, the idea of and I, I suppose you could get an early impression how um, you know how serious they were. I didn't know that. I would have assumed something that wasn't even in Los Angeles, right. you know. Um, but uh, was like v- so fortunate to for it to turn out to be mm-hmm. as special as it was, and. Um, not expecting that at all, just really expecting to be able to kind of like work on a play. Yeah. And, um, a play you love though. While auditioning for like, you know, gum commercials and stuff. <laughs> did you ever get the gum commercial? I never got a gum commercial. Really? Nope. nope. <laughs> maybe now. I did like a, maybe now, maybe hopefully. <laughs> if anybody's listening. <laughs> Wrigley, if you're watching this. Exactly. Yeah, Mr. Wrigley. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you find, uh, you know, I, the, the, I feel like it was different back then where uh, a performance in an L.A. theater production would kind of open doors for you. Did, did you find that that was the case? Um, open doors for me in terms yeah, in of, terms of uh, your career. film and television. Or maybe it just, you know, just reaffirmed your love for this. I, I think it was that. It was really, and, you know, to this day, because I ended up going back to New York and I've, 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 I've you know, um, been with some of the best off-Broadway um, houses in in New York City, even finally, like, got to do something on Broadway. And mm, it doesn't really get close to yeah. this experience that I had in Long Beach <laughs> at International City yeah. Theater. And um, and uh, uh, I, I can't remember. No, it's not something that the community took very seriously mm-hmm. um, as far as casting is concerned. But I do think that, like, here and there, I remember... God, you're really taking me back. <laughs> so, Tracy Letts, do we know uh-huh. who Tracy Letts is? Um, he was in Los Angeles at the time, and he was um, looking for work as an actor. And um, 
and and uh, I had no idea he was even a writer. And I remember uh, he was with a friend of mine, uh, Sarah Paulson. Uh, <laughs> I was at, wondering <laughs> <laughs> at the time, and I ran into them walking their dogs, and she introduced me to him, and and he was like, "I just read your review um, in the L.A. Times for Orphans. It sounds, you know." So I think that there were. Of course, I think that again, and you having seen it, and even remembering that you saw it, yeah, had its own kind of significance. But it's not a significance that was felt in t- professionally. No, mm-hmm. um, I did want to mention because I also did see you did King Lear with Glenda Jackson yeah. on Broadway, which was fun- yeah phenomenal. You. Um, you played one of the most hated characters in American literature. I Not love even American, him. I shouldn't say that. Um, but you have done, you've done, I know you've done Hamlet and the Scottish play. I didn't play Hamlet. No, but still, just to, just to be doing those, yeah, you know, yeah. those classics, what was, what was that like? It was incredible. It was, it was going to, it was just sort of staying in school in a way. And um, I didn't uh, particularly like t- uh, uh love Shakespeare in any way, not even in school, really. I think it, 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 it's a little too, um, challenging to read. It was always, it always worked if we were to read it, uh, aloud, but it wasn't the kind of thing that would like excite me to do. I, I wasn't like in love with verse or anything like that. Um, I wouldn't really understand what I was saying unless uh, until like the 10th round, (laughs) you know, you're ahead of most people if it well, only took you 10. And 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 um and so again it was really trying to get work and stepping through any door that um would open and so then if there was an audition for a production of Hamlet in Washington DC um I would audition for it and um and like learn sort of on the on the fly really um uh, and then if I got the job in the process of rehearsal, it was this incredible kind of like school training, um, because you were given, you know, you're rehearsing, uh, six days a week and, 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 and keeping a secret that you don't know what the fuck you're doing <laughs> and, 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 and sort of like learning, you know, through the process of rehearsal and even in performance and, and sort of like given that opportunity, it was I, I, one of the more special things in terms of like feeling like, you know, cause I didn't get a master's and, um, and I felt like, um, at least within the realm of New York, not coming out of one of those more elevated programs was very limiting in terms of getting in the door and being taken seriously and getting auditions for theater and, or even being considered for a part, um, when it came to theater. And, um, and so uh, working at uh, Michael Kahn's theater, the Shakespeare Theater Company in, in, in DC, and he was the head of the drama department at Juilliard at the time. And so it was all sort of like this roundabout way of classical training. Yeah. yeah. No, smart. You saved money. They actually pay you. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> and got into another union <laughs> to equity, which was also great. Uh, I believe... Um, <laughs> uh, if, if I'm correct, because I feel like King Lear was the last thing I saw before the pandemic, so that must have been about 2019. You saw King Lear as yes, well. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, was punishing. Linda Jackson. Who's not going to see that? Yeah, but it was a punishing show. Oh, I can't even imagine. But it was it was fantastic for you guys. No, I disagree. Okay, I disagree. But I'd never seen a production of King Lear before, so maybe yeah, you didn't think it was good. And you found out why. I wasn't <laughs> saying. I, I I I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not saying it wasn't good. No, it was. It, no, there it were was things really about good. it that are incredible, but yeah. it's just it's harrowing. Yeah, it's I, very I, harrowing. I there's and, you and I gouging. Um. I gouge. <laughs> right. I know. That's right. A that's, lot of violence. Yeah. All, a lot of text. A very long play, and we were sort of, and it was a very sort of stripped down yeah. kind of concept with wind, with wind string, a string quartet, uh, playing through the uh, verse. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I'm, so, I'm weird. I don't even remember. I apologize. I don't remember who the director was. But. Uh, Sam Gold. 
Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but no, I mean, and just to see Glenda Jackson, I, in incredible, person. and also in in yeah, that yeah. again being uh, in school, yeah. you know, uh, and in training. Yeah. Do you and, have moments where you're kind of like, oh my god, that's Glenda Jackson? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it was it was the reason uh, to do it in a lot of ways, outside of it being Shakespeare, Broadway, Sam Gold, and. Uh, incredible ensemble of like professionals but um getting to see uh glenda jackson rehearse every day it was a dream Mm. you know again it's like i guess it's that idea of like staying in school in a way you know and still learning things yeah i don't know if you still learn things even today Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was. Um, we we're having this uh, conversation uh, uh, with Sag just uh, the other day. Maybe it was yesterday. It feels <laughs> like it, may, it was either it was like five minutes ago. It was either five weeks ago or yesterday or this morning. I can't really recall. But um, Matthew McFadian was saying um, how you start from zero every. Um, job. I can't remember the context of the question, but I remember thinking um, that is sort of how it feels. It's something that I think you should teach yourself to do um, uh, if it doesn't feel that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am curious, uh, just because I love the ephemeralness of theater and how you know, you can have the best performance of your life, but sometimes things can go horribly wrong just because it's live theater. Oh, yeah. So what, what's the, the, I don't want to say the worst, but the strangest thing that happened to you on stage? Oh, God. <laughs> There's so many. Um, <laughs> and yet we keep coming back. Why is that? Oh, I don't know if I could. <laughs> I don't know if my body could take it, but I remember, you know, what they call corpsing, which oh, is yeah. like getting the giggles. <laughs> it's just horrible and it, it and if it happens you know there isn't anything that can really stop it from happening and the the horror of it is actually what feeds it even more yep. um but you wouldn't believe like who i've corpsed with no! uh, like like i remember there was a moment there was a production in washington dc with jane alexander oh. and it was um Ibsen's Ghosts, and I was Oswald. A very funny play. Hilarious play. <laughs> so much room for laughter in that play. And there, were, there was this one spot that for a couple of weeks we couldn't get past it. And, 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 and it was her, you know? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just advice. was like, I know, I'm sorry, <laughs> Jane. I'm so sorry. But she, um, <laughs> she would start... She would get this glint in her eye and I would start to panic and we would go through this period until finally we got yelled at by the stage manager <laughs> because it, 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 it kept on happening at the same time of the play um, every night. I remember it happening also. Um, I'm just going to name drop this entire Please. interview because my first uh, play off Broadway in uh, New York was with Oscar Isaac mm. at Manhattan Theater Club and he's nightmare <laughs> he's he's a big giggler uh, oh he played a ghost he was the ghost of federico garcia lorca and so no one but the main character was played by this actor this incredible actor uh, richie coster he was the only one that could see lorca mm. and the rest of us couldn't see lorca but Oscar's on stage, and he knows that we can't see him. So he would come into your periphery while you were doing text and just get you to laugh. It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. You're just, like, doing this, like, super serious scene, and then you start to feel, like, <laughs> his face just coming up and all right over here. You should report him to the union. I feel this is. I'm a doing it now. <laughs> uh, you've also written for theater. Uh, it, in 2010, you wrote Flaca Loves Bone. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. Um, and and directed as yeah. well. Is that something that you'd like to do more of? Maybe you know, even on camera. I would. I would. I would yeah. love that. I'm so scared of 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 discovering 
of 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 failing um, at something because I think that when you're um, when you're the actor, you know, it's 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 like never your fault, right? Um, and um, uh, you uh, you can go into something and you do you do the best um, uh, with what you have in your corner in a way, which isn't necessarily. I'm simplifying it into terms that are not real, really, because in the best of circumstances, it's such a collaborative, like, you know, um, uh, experience. And every component of it is exactly what makes it what it is, but you still can get away with yeah. like, you know, you, you, you get about, say, like you say, they say that your performance isn't, that you're not very good in it, but it's still the project is like, you're, you know, and the idea of like stepping into that level of responsibility, mm -hmm. um, I think on, the day I would love and have loved in the past, yeah. a more kind of um, parental position, um, uh, and uh, instead of the child's position, like I'm such a bratty child, you know, <laughs> like stop telling me what to do, you know, and um, and 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 so yeah. Anyway, the so short, the short, the short. Uh, you're never gonna get through these cards. <laughs> they told me that this was gonna be ninety. I was like ninety minutes. Oh, you're out. I was like, who? And now I won't shut up. Now I told you. I told you to go fast. Look, we're already halfway done. Look at that. See? Okay. I yes. shouldn't have marked the time. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was really freaking. I mean, I was like the guy who battles zombies is worried about talking to actors for ninety minutes. Come on. I love talking to actors. I just don't want them to get bored of me. <laughs> uh, start corpsing. <laughs> um, did you ever uh, did you ever forget your lines on stage? That's yes. Oh, I forgot Shakespeare on stage. Well, that's the one if you're going yeah. to. It was yeah. a nightmare. I turned to the audience and I said, "Whatever." <laughs> Which show was that? It was um, it was uh, much What'd ado do? about nothing. Oh my god! In the park in 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 the park in New York, massive fucking audience, <laughs> and it was just gone. It was just. The line was just gone, oh, and I, wow. and that that that, I, I I'm gonna be repeating myself because I think I told this story when we were um, talking with SAG, and um and it was just that it that that paralyzed that moment. It's just like okay, it'll come. It's not coming. It's not gonna come. And then saying whatever. <laughs> and did you just walk off stage? Or? No, no, no. I I, I had oh, to okay. continue. The next <laughs> line came. Okay. Okay. Did the cast the, take you out? You know, the guy I remember, the actor that I was working with, he just like his eye, like that oh. that extra widening of the eyes, just knowing that it yeah. was happening to me and being like, How are you gonna get out of this? And then saying whatever and being like, I can't believe you just said whatever. <laughs> Never knew Shakespeare wrote whatever. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so going back to, to TV, because I believe you graduated in, in 97 from Tish. Yeah. And it seems like you started working pretty quick. I used, you said no, but I mean, I remember Buffy the Vampire Slayer. and 99. Blue. That was 99. It's a couple oh, of okay. those, those two years after, you know, that you feel those two yeah. years of not working. So is, it looks fast to You us. feel it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was an eternity. And you did, I think, all four Law & Orders. Yes, eventually. <laughs> over the next 20 years. Oh, okay. Okay. How many times were you the killer? Um, I was always the killer. Were you wasn't really? I? Yeah, I was always. I was. I remember being like, getting really used to being in interrogation rooms. Because it wasn't just Law and Order. It was yes. CSI and Criminal Intent. Well, the Criminal Intent and SVU, and um, I, I got recycled on Criminal Intent. Like there was, um, the, the there were the rule was. Um, after six years, they could bring in another somebody that had already played a different role. Real, because I've only known one other actor who did that, and it was William H Macy. Really? Yeah. So you're in good company. I did two Criminal Intents. Wow. Yep. And uh, and uh, you know, without a trace, and killed somebody in that. <laughs> um, uh, body of Proof, CSI, Killer, NYPD Blue. You killed somebody kill in you that. You were the killer in NYPD Blue. I just remember you were goth. Yeah, yeah. I was. Oh no, I was the killer. You were. Oh yeah. Okay, maybe I've only ever seen the clip, but I, I gloated didn't about it. Killer. I killed. It was with Taryn Manning. Oh wow, really? Yeah, wow. she was my girlfriend, and I like 
I don't know, I did some sort of ritualistic sacrifice or something like that. <laughs> but what were you sort of learning about being in front of the camera and all, you know, all these different shows and coming in? I, I've heard so many actors say it's actually harder to come in and be a guest star than it is to be a series regular because you have to build a whole backstory. I found it to be like um, really magical and um maybe my my superpower is like ingratiating myself <laughs> to like new environments maybe you know and um so in those circumstances it was stepping into these very well oiled machines and um and so they would be and i didn't really you know you 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 learn your shit and 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 you stay in your lane and you um and uh I, I, you know, know your lines, don't corpse. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I think that what I always felt was a kind of a level of, um, sort of gratitude, um, you know, because I wasn't going to go in there and be like, what's my character's motivation? <laughs> you know, um, I was smart enough to know that I'm stepping into somebody's home and I want to be the best guest I could possibly mm -hmm. be. And so they were very magical experiences more. And, and also again, misinforming in that, like thinking that it was all like that, that yeah. it all worked so efficiently, you know, it wasn't until stepping into sort of bigger parts and, and different kinds of projects where that trial and error and, 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 and being closer to kind of like what the madness of, of, of developing it is, the excitement of it, the party of it, but also the challenge of it. Where I was like, aren't you, aren't you supposed to be perfect? You know what I mean? <laughs> aren't you know, aren't you supposed to know exactly what we're doing, you know, and what we're going to shoot and what the scene is and, and stuff like that. I know so many actors, so many people, honestly, like just want a steady job. And I think something that, that every actor kind of feels the pain of is doing a pilot that maybe doesn't get picked up yeah. or doesn't last very long. And I believe you did the Burn Notice spinoff. I did the Burn Notice uh, 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 movie. And, oh, it was, I thought it was a pilot. No, it, no. Was, a, it was a movie. It was um, Sam Axe. The Fall of Sam Axe. His name was Sam Axe? Sam Axe was... Um, uh, uh, Bruce's Bruce's role. Oh, Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell's oh, okay. role in Burn okay. Nerd is so it was it was a standalone uh, TV movie about his character. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, and then obviously you did the Wonder you've Woman seen pilots. Orphans, but you you haven't <laughs> seen the Fall of Sam you X. Know, I've never seen an episode of Burn Notice, which is actually really crazy because I love Bruce Campbell. And years before that, I did a play with I did a production of of Hamlet with uh, Jeffrey Donovan no way. in Boston. Oh, Wow. Yeah. That's he was uh, He directed the TV movie uh oh. The Fall of Sam X. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Uh was it is it disappointing though? Like I know um I, I think it was it 2011 you did Wonder Woman uh -huh. and I know that, that there's a lot of buzz on that for yeah. the season and when you found out it wasn't picked it up. It was David E Kelly. Yes. Um Adrian Palicki was uh, like fresh from Friday Night Lights. Mm -hmm. It was my first first pilot that I had ever booked. And um it was a game changer yeah. in my head. <laughs> didn't turn out to be a game changer. <laughs> it didn't get it didn't get picked up. Which was I remember really shocking at the time. I felt shocked. Yeah. I was like, gosh, it must have been really not worked. <laughs> uh, I I didn't see it. Um but uh I I was very devoted to the idea of it happening. Uh did you ever think you'd get another shot at that property? <laughs> No, That's no, crazy. I did not. It's super crazy. <laughs> yeah, but David E. Kelly, I mean, one of the and best. One of the best. Yeah. One of the best. And again, the, 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 the interesting sort of like building blocks that lead to these kinds of opportunities, it's, it's, it's just it's so much a matter of like, it really is a matter of, um, I guess, with most things, consistency, you know what I mean? Because as you mentioned law and order and different things started to shoot in new york at the time um there was the good wife and fx was already kind of like years into their incredible like original content um and they were shooting a boxing show in new york and it was called lights out and david e kelly had seen lights out and it was a show that only lasted one season 
but it was enough for him to have seen this, you know, three episode yeah. arc of a character that I did and then kind of like put me and then suddenly you're not invisible anymore. You know, it doesn't really matter how good you do in um, in some instances, in, 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 a, in a lot of instances. That isn't necessarily true because it is how I ended up getting a, the job that changed my life. Um, uh, but. I mean, I had just been, I'd been auditioning since yeah. I was in school and, um, and, and really, you know, yeah, getting into the union and, um, and, 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 uh, surviving really. And until this instant where David, but, but again, and then it went right back to the, right back to the table because it didn't get picked up. And, uh, another rite of passage. Have you ever been fired from a role? Oh, no. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> I think you're safe now. Oh, no, no, no. No never, way. You never no. feel that way? I was just way. talking about it with my friends on the way here. Oh, yeah? They were saying, well, when we, and I was like, if I'm not fired. Oh, has like Oscar Isaac been hanging around on uh, The Last of Us set? Well, on The Last of Us yes. set? Yeah. Um, Show, showing up in your periphery again? No, they're not going to fire me for The Last of Us. <laughs> You sound pretty sure. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so when you reference the, you know, the job that changed your life, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about season four of Game of Thrones. Yes. Um, which is so funny because for years I try to get my roommate to watch that show. And of course she walks in for the one scene where you're getting your eyes gouged out oh. again. And now she has, she has sworn off that show and we'll never see it. Right. Um, yeah. Were you already a fan going yes. in? Yes. Oh, yeah. I was. Yeah. I, was I, was, I was deep in <laughs> um, uh, to, to the show um, when they were casting it. And um, uh, <laughs> this is a terrible story. <laughs> I, um, I um, oh, gosh. It's a, there's so much context to it as well. Um, well, you have nothing but time. Is okay. The <laughs> I've told this story before. Um, once before, only once before, but in a very public setting. Um, and you're all going to turn against me now, but <laughs> it's the truth. Um, uh, there, a friend of mine who's a, a playwriting professor at USC, he asked me to um, mentor. And I was at that point of my life. I had started to, there were just things that weren't, uh, there were plays that I, were, I, w I wasn't cast in that would have kept, would have given me a job through the winter, frankly. And so at that point, I started to kind of come out to LA for pilot season. And so um, I started to just be really more practical. Like you said, the dream really was getting a steady gig. And, um, uh, n no matter where I would find it. And, um, and I, I knew that, um, I, 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 my chances were better here. Um, if I rededicated myself to the Los Angeles experience, which I decided to do. And, um, and so anyway, so I was here and a friend of mine, um, Oliver Mayer, he's a, a playwright and, um, and a professor at USC. And he asked me to mentor a graduating student from the acting program. Oh, yes. And that meant, you know, and he was like, you can, you know, good, d d come see his showcase and d d take him to coffee. And I, I, he's a very talented young actor. And um, and uh, and and we became friends. And he asked me to put him on tape for his first audition. <gasps> oh. He's 25 years old at the time. There was no way he was going to get the part. <laughs> it was for Oberyn? It was for Oberyn. Wow. I know it sounds horrible. No, no respect. But listen, um, are I you mean, still friends? I should ask. Uh, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen him in a long time. <laughs> but listen, the character. So this is. So I gladly first. I was furious because <laughs> there were these full scenes from that are from the first episode of the fourth season of Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm the third season of which I was watching at the time. So, and, and Joffrey dies, like in one of the scenes, in these audition sides. I was furious. I couldn't believe it. Surprised they let I, that out. I, 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 I was like, how could you show me this? This is ridiculous, <laughs> he's like, he'd never seen the show. So he had it coming. 
He had a, he had no idea what it he had no idea what it was. And then there was like a screen description, and it described this man that was like in his late thirties, early forties, had daughters, and da da da. And I was like doing the sides with him, and I was like, "Is this real? Like, <laughs> are they really seeing people for this role?" And I called my manager, and I said, "Are they seeing people for this role?" And they they said, "No." Um, uh, if it wasn't a big name, then it would likely not be a SAG uh, contract. Really? Yeah. Huh. I wonder how much trouble I'm going to get into. <laughs> um, well, because it shot overseas, so. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That was the information that came back to my way anyway. <laughs> you know, that, that was what they, uh, That's what they said. Well, that was what they said to, you know, that's sure. what they said to me. And then, and then they said, actually casting would um like to see what you do with the material and i was like okay so i put myself on tape for it so i didn't necessarily snatch no. it away from no, this please. poor kid but i basically did no it's and, not um, like you didn't send his tape in or something no no he like sent this. his own tape in for sure um and uh uh i i i, I ended up so again all the way back to Sarah Paulson. Um, cause there was a lot of finagling in this, in, in, in this job, because basically I put myself on tape for this thing and I was like, no one's going to see this. <laughs> and it's that issue of like invisibility that you feel, you know, like, um, if, if, if there isn't, um, specific context, um, how are they going to pay attention? Mm -hmm. You know, how are they going to see you? It doesn't matter how, how good you are. Um, uh, it does matter. Um, but that's what sort of like my defensive thinking was. And so I call Sarah Paulson, who I know is, um, uh, uh, best friends with Amanda Peet, who's married to David Benioff, who is the creator of Game of Thrones. And, and it was just like a, a box checking thing. Like there was nothing that could possibly turn out from that, um, that connection it was more a matter of like look if i've done this no one's really going to see it if you have the time like look at it if you think anything of it i don't know if you want to mention it so that the casting director actually sees it or whatever or whatever she <laughs> being sarah paulson is like you give me that tape right now <laughs> sat down with amanda like watched it immediately and then insisted that david watch it and it kind of like it didn't you know just happen instantly from that but that was that's how that's that's how it happened but i mean you wouldn't have gotten the part if you yeah unbelievable yeah it was honestly i i i it it well i don't yeah thank you um yeah. uh i didn't even let you say what you were gonna say but <laughs> just i know that, what you were trying yeah, to say yeah no just that you were really good thank you yeah. <laughs> but it still was that luck of like you know i met sarah when we were 18 years old wow and um and knew that she was somebody that I could, that I would do that for, that I could, you know, and, um, and uh, I honestly, I think that I didn't believe that it would make a difference. And it did. It did. And that really did open doors for you. That it changed, changed career, like it overnight? Abs it, it changed my, it changed my life. Really? Absolutely. Had you already booked Narcos or? No, I got oh, Narcos wow. because of Game of Thrones. Really? Yeah, they were shocked to know that I was available because <laughs> the uh, the fight scene had not uh, aired yet. Oh, so they didn't know that you were off the show. Yeah. Okay. And Carmen Cuba, the casting director for Narcos, I had uh, known, um, she had brought me in a lot over the years and um, you stick around and, uh, you, you know, you, 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 I guess you force these opportunities uh, to happen. And uh, was Narcos an offer, or did you still have to audition? Um, so, really, this is a major confessional. Um, <laughs> I um, I did audition for it. I did not get the part. Oh, really? Yeah, they offered it to somebody else, and um, Oscar Isaac. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and uh, and then that uh, person fell out. Nice. Um, but at that point, the fourth season had aired of Game of Thrones oh, was was okay. airing. Okay. And so um, when uh, the actor fell out of the role, um, I was auditioning for um, uh, Daredevil. 
and uh, for Marvel and um, for Matt Murdock. Uh, no, it was or like, Happy. No, it was like a, it was like a sixth. It was like a, a supporting okay. a supporting character. Um, you know, uh, character number six. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, he was a lawyer. I can't remember the name. And um, and uh, as we get closer and closer to the present, the memory gets <laughs> foggier and foggier. If you want to talk strange. about 1983, I'll give you all of the details. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, so it so I was going to test for that role, and um, and so to intercept the 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 test, they ended up um, offering me. Oh uh, wow! The narcos it was like netflix against netflix oh, that's right yeah that's so funny yeah um I, I don't know if this was the first time you'd played a real person because javier I, I, he actually came to set didn't he oh yeah, yeah absolutely. he's in an episode yeah 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 he's in um he's in the end of the second season and um that was boyd hallbrook's idea to go to quantico and meet these guys wow. and train and i think that i i was very intimidated by the idea i was um uh you know like i'm not gonna go to quantico i'm like a theater nerd like i, I you know I, I i i i was way too intimidated by the idea and um and so uh, boyd convinced me to uh, go with him and we um met uh steve murphy and javier pena and spent the week with them and, and did these like simulated you know um bus drug busts and and really and, oh yeah acted them out so we went to quantico um in virginia and um and uh uh where the fbi and the dea where they actually train and um and uh and went through like a crash course of training and um obviously they were going to get their kicks uh, um you know and like put us through yeah. some serious really crazy um uh stuff where it, as part of the training you simulate these and it's like theater actually and um and these sort of improv experiments where you're given the assi- like basically um uh god what do they call it oh my gosh it's basically like a mock setup of like a suburban block where um you go and um and play out like ba- like you're 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 undercover as a drug dealer and um and and the idea and these are this different sort of set of rules that you need to abide by um in terms of uh, how to get the most information and how to not get killed mm-hmm. and in the um <laughs> i remember boyd went first on one of them <laughs> And he came back, they drove him back in the car and, 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 and he got out of the car and he lit a cigarette in his hand, just like, (laughs) you know, trembling. Yeah. So I was like, oh shit, (laughs) um, this is going to be horrible. And I had to go up, uh, you know, get in this car and they drive you up and like, go knock on the door and, and, um, and, 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 and buy a bag of weed. Mm. And, um. He kept on asking me to come into the house and come into the house and come into the house. And it was this incredible acting exercise because I was like, I am not going (laughs) in that fucking house. Like, there's no way. And he's like, and he's like, well, what? He's like, what's wrong? Why are you being so weird? And I'm like, well, you're, why are you being weird? Like, you know, like, what's, I just can't. I'm just like, oh, no, I'm just like in a rush. Like, we do do this all the time. Why aren't you selling me the drugs? Why do you want me to come? I've never come inside before. No, man, it's okay. You know, and then like, like just turning it around on him. Him being like, look, you're like clearly you don't want to, we don't have to do this. And basically like saying, you know, the goal, like, and, and anyway, basically they were going to get me to go into the house and then shoot me in the back of the head. Wow. Um, uh, which they did to Boyd. I was just going to say Bo- Boyd failed, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it was crazy. I'm trying to think, had you played a real person before? Did it change um, your approach? No. Knowing I hadn't, that I hadn't played a, a real person before. And um and I think that um I think that the 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 biggest influence um because this wasn't necessarily people somebody that whose like um phys- physical attributes right. anybody was familiar with. So there was a total freedom in that. But it was more a matter of like 
um, paying due respect and also kind of feeling a certain amount of permission, um, you know, to, to be, to be him. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he's a very easygoing guy and I didn't feel from him any kind of, um, pressure to do it any certain, any, any, any certain way. He just seemed like he thought it was just really cool that it was happening. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'd be pretty thrilled if you were playing me. I yeah. Think. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I dream that that can happen someday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so obviously that brings us to The Mandalorian. Um, and thinking back. To, yeah. Thank you. I mean, obviously it's the Star Wars universe, but I'm not sure that people really appreciate what a risk this show was. I mean, if the lead character is pretty much never seen, you have him acting opposite a puppet for eight episodes. How, you know, did you feel it was a risky venture? No. <laughs> no. I just I, built that I whole like, thing up. I was like, this is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, you don't have to see my face. Like, talk about it not being your fault. <laughs> you know? Um, but there was one, it's Star Wars, and, um, and two, it, it, it was John Favreau and 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 David Filoni, and um and the, the the first meeting that I had with them, the entire first season was story illustrated on the walls of this writing room, and I was able to see and just I I guess the kind of privilege that I felt to be invited into a room like that to even see what they were working on, um. Uh, and and it also just becoming like ridiculously evident to me like how it good intense. it okay. was you know and i was like yeah this is gonna work <laughs> you know was and, there a moment on set where you knew because like i knew at the end of episode one when it you know when 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 they were gonna take my helmet off no 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 when he's pointing or reaching out to the child oh yeah episode yeah, one with that, that like, it's a home oh, run this is yeah 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 yeah, yeah. well you know, I the, almost got teary. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the way that we, the way that we had, the way that the, that we did the show, um, uh, so much of the role was, um, f you know, physically authored by uh, Brendan Wayne mm -hmm. um, in its first season, and um, and and it, they were like really great in terms of having me come in and 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 establish like like physical uh traits of the character but in the practical shooting of season one i wasn't there very often i was there for season two and this was um uh sort of circumstantial as it related to uh scheduling and um it's very smart of them really because if it didn't work out with somebody like they didn't really have to figure it out until the end of the first season yeah. like who would be playing the part um, <laughs> who's under the mask yeah, yeah exactly um i hadn't really thought of it thought about it that way until now um but um they're not firing you from the mandalorian either no i god i hope not <laughs> and um and so the um the really kind of like on the day experience um, I was there for season one, but not like I was for uh, season two. And so at that point, it, what was impressive to me, because it was coming out and airing while we were shooting season two and people were falling yeah. in love with it and, and, and just really falling in love with the show. And what I was, we were well into season two at that point, which I think was good because we weren't, I guess, like mm -hmm. trying to chase any particular expectation and um and um and so it wasn't that sort of thing that oh um i had already i had already i i already, I, I i suppose there were instances in season 1 i guess i just always had total faith in it and because of how it was presented to me and the way that they were executing it and what it looked like physically just to be on the set and 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 john you know, invited me into all of the technical aspects and the way that we would rehearse and with the volume and creating all of these as much as as much sort of like practical immersive um, things that could basically help you understand what it would uh, ultimately look like. Um, you know, because so much of it isn't there, and then surprisingly, so much of it is. Yeah. And um, 
So yeah, I knew it was going to be a hit. <laughs> was there a and moment? And I knew that if it wasn't, it wasn't going to be my fault. <laughs> This may sound like a strange question, but I'm curious if you put on the armor in you know, before you voice the role, before preparing, because I have to think you have to take into consideration that changes how a person walks, it changes how a person moves, and you want totally. to know all that. Yeah. Totally. They, 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 they set up um, all of these different circumstances where the idea and, and, and the, the kind of, um, you, I would assume, even in the doing, because they have a, a, a mic pack in the helmet, I would assume that um, so much of it, because because of the way that it sounded to myself um, while doing it inside the helmet, was so um, strange mm -hmm. that I assumed that we would just be having to dub the whole thing over, whether I was there or not. <laughs> and um, and you would be amazed. There's so much that would was picked up um, um, from from the day. Yeah. And um, and that was a and it was a it was an incredibly surgical kind of like interesting way of figuring out how to um um basically you know collaborate you know with um with the people that were making the show but also somebody else who's physically doing it and um and then the kind of like strange precision of uh, voice work mm -hmm. Um, that came down to sort of um, either like, f uh, you know, reauthoring the tone of something that you were there for or picking up on just little physical instances of breath and head turn and stuff like that that, that, that somebody else had done. Uh, there's a scene in particular that always comes to mind, and it's the end of season two because... Um, I remember saying something at the time, like I'm watching a man in a tin suit holding a puppet and I am sobbing hysterically. <laughs> and I was thinking, you're not just performing for yourself. You're like, you're putting what the audience feels, the reaction and response you have to Grogu is his personality in many ways. Did you think of it as acting for two people essentially? That was a kind of, that was a very meta sort of like moment yeah. where um, I think I understood if the scene worked how it would feel and the idea of it working and it feeling that way moved me very much along with like what the story is mm -hmm. you know my child I love you and you know <laughs> we're saying goodbye and and all of that but there was something again when you when you when you think about starting from zero with each thing and, and, and learning something new on that day, I felt like I learned something new where it was also the concept of it really contributed to how I played it in that. I don't know if that makes sense, but it just moved me. The idea that, mm -hmm. that people would have this, if they love this, if they love these characters, and he's going to risk his identity in the way that he does to to let the child see him and make eye contact with him in a physical way. It was just very touching. Yeah. And the idea of that touching people really touched me um, and, uh, and informed the playing of it. Do you remember how many times you had to do it? Not a lot. I just, I always think it's weird. There wasn't a lot of time on yeah. that set. No, really? no, yeah, no, it was just a couple of takes. Okay. I just think it's strange to ask people to do these big emotional moments and then like cut. You know, everyone talks for a little while. Okay, let's do it again and throw you back into it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have and to the stay child walks in that off space? With Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> um, it all becomes very practical yeah. when you're doing it. There are so many sort of like, um, you know, it's a very. Uh, there are so many different things that are happening at the time, but it was. It was a very emotional day. Yeah. Um, uh, and and really um, uh, moving and yeah. fun. <laughs> um, uh, no, I think you you had done comedy before, like Kingsman, <laughs> um, but you really got to show your funny side in 2022's The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, um, which is probably my favorite meme of all time is just you gazing lovingly. <laughs> At Nicole, I use it for everything. <laughs> High on acid. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was good acting. Um, and then obviously one of the best. Saturday the character life. was high on LSD, <laughs> by the way. 
And then obviously you hosted one of the best Saturday Night Lives ever. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, did, were, did you find were people resistant to using you in comedy or? or? Um, I yeah, I think um, uh, especially w in the world of uh, casting, uh, uh, in the w in the uh, how I understood it. Um, specifically related to episodic television, like you were a drama actor or you were a comedy actor. Um, it didn't relate so much um, uh, the same in uh, way with theater. I had done comedies on stage. And, um, and of course, you know, a lot of different sort of uh, Shakespeare's comedy and, and, and finding comedy in Shakespeare's is such a fucking nerd, but... Um, <laughs> It, it, you know, I was definitely a drum, a dramatic actor as far as television was concerned. And, um, and there wasn't anything I felt I could do about that. Um, I was like, fine by me. I'm a dramatic actor. Yeah. Just yeah. give me the job. And, um, typecasting is casting. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so to be able to, um, to do comedy, I think I'd already learned through my, uh, experiences in theater, how, um, uh, sophisticated uh comedy is and how um and how uh i and maybe um maybe i do love it the most in a way i i i i uh i didn't think so as a young per, I, mm -hmm. you know when i was young i wanted to be uh james dean and um and uh and now yeah I just wanna, <laughs> give me a comedy <laughs> Well, you'd also done the bubble, which I imagine had a lot of improv. Yeah, so, yeah, that's yeah. that's 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 another whole that's a whole other skill as well yep. that I was not trained in. Talk about school, really? absolutely not. Um, if I feel like you're gonna make me come inside the house and shoot me in the back of the head, I'll improvise my ass off. <laughs> you know, but 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 I, you know, improv is such a skill. Yeah, and it, it, like and and um and that was like I was more an audience member in that experience than I had ever been. Um, just watching a lot of pros and a lot of comedians mm -hmm. um, basically write on the day or in the middle of a scene and. I was in a state of panic on that movie. <laughs> like, you know, what different things you're going to throw. Like how I, my mind is not going to work as fast as yours um, in this, in this, in this moment. And, um, and so I just made the character grumpier and grumpier <laughs> and, and like, you know, less and less words. Yes. Yeah. More of the straight man. actually. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's interesting. Was that more intimidating than Saturday Night Live? Because Saturday Night Live yes. scripted at least. It was way more intimidating okay. than Saturday Night Live. I think the idea of Saturday Night Live was very intimidating to me. But then on the day, what I discovered was it felt like theater. Yeah. And there were so many instances when you mentioned writing and directing. I um, uh, am a member of the Labyrinth Theater Company in New York City. Thank you so much. <laughs> And um, and my work with them was much more as a director, and because uh, I had sort of a separate kind of jobbing career as a, an actor, but I wasn't really looking mm -hmm. to do acting work within Labyrinth, and um, and so, but we do a lot of friends readings. You do a lot of different, you know, um, at the New Dramatists or like different theater, uh, you know, theater workshops and stuff like that. And you get together at 11 a.m. and read a play. And then at 3 p.m. you're doing the play with music stands in front of a live audience like this. And um, I didn't realize that the, the arduous nature of that experience would save my life <laughs> on Saturday Night Live. And like look at cue cards and just sort of like, you know, um, deal with text yeah. on the on on the on the fly you corpse a bit on that show but it's kind of uh i do endearing. i'm a corpser i don't know i don't blame they also gave you some tongue twisters so i don't blame you it's true yeah. <laughs> do you uh uh come to them with ideas like I, I think i may have heard that um the coma sketch was because you already had that voice well my friend is here we would oh. do that voice my friend coco's here and um <laughs> and and we would do that voice on the set of the last of us um, oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. Is it based on someone or? <laughs> oh, <laughs> spill Coco. Who's? <laughs> That's a yes. 
<laughs> yeah. Do they know that it's based on them? Have they seen it? And... Well, I. It's not the guy you stole the role from. I stepped it. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, that's how why he didn't get the part. He talked like that. <laughs> um. The uh, the I I I think I I just kind of um. I, I I stepped into that experience a, a little petrified mm-hmm. and uh, thought, you know, look, this is all I got. Otherwise, like, I'll do whatever you ask me yeah. to do. Um, and uh, and basically, like, ah, you know, I I I I talk in this ridiculous accent, uh, you know, with uh, my friend, and it was contagious and got the entire like butch set of the last of us in alberta <laughs> canada to talk like you know like a lot of and um and 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 so and they were like we love that and i was like yeah yeah, yeah you love it you know they're going to be nice right, to all of right. the hosts that come in and um on the day of the table read you get a stack of these scripts and um i was with coco actually and i and i look at the first thing and i say you know a coma and this man wakes up from the coma and then i saw the way that his, the, their first lines were written and it was written in, and i was like you're not gonna believe this i was like look at this it'll never make the show but they wrote a sketch that wow. was based on this ridiculous way that we talk to each other how did they describe it did they say funny voice or they specifically say pedro pascal's funny voice um, he's demonstrated it, it no it, it was like they wake up and uh and 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 they say you know was hopping on right now oh and they're like like that yeah oh. like w a h yeah is you know h a p p a h n a a you know like hop on and i was like i they I was like, look, it's right here. Oh, wow. And yeah. did you think it was going to get cut before? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I thought that they would, there were so many things that I thought that 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 would 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 not um, make the show that made the show. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. It was so magical. I would love to know how Baba was spelled out. Baba. 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 <laughs> like Baba. B-A-H-B-A-H. Baba. Okay. My dog is named Wilbur, and I call him Beba sometimes. Beba. So, yeah. Wilba. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's going to be my ringtone when this <laughs> comes out. Um, so I love that this this originated on the set of The Last of Us because, you know, I think of it as being like such a serious um, um, dour set. Um, and, of course, you received not only an Emmy nomination, but two SAG Award nominations for a male actor in a leading role in drama ensemble. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I've heard you say that you weren't familiar with the video game prior to signing on to the show, and I'm, you know, there, there, there was not a good track record of video game adaptations, I feel, until recently, so was there any hesitation? No, there was no hesitation. It was another one of those um, uh, uh, um, instances where it, it, it looked like such a special project um, that... Uh, of course, I was familiar with Chernobyl, and okay. um, and uh, in a very short amount of time, uh, was introduced to Craig Mazin, and um, and uh, got along with him enormously. I, you know, was raised, developed by HBO Television, <laughs> and um, Carolyn Strauss was the executive producer of Game of Thrones, and so it, I, I, I knew, I knew they could do it. I didn't know if I could do it. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was definitely more afraid with that one than um, I had been anything else because of the expectation, because of what the IP is, because of what people's like personal experience to this immersive game is, and um, and and meeting uh, people's expectations and still not compromising what is brilliant writing on the page because of this sort of fear and this constant sort of like dance around like oh my god what am i do i don't what am i doing what do i sound like what am i you know what do, do, you know am i tough enough am i cool enough am i sad enough am i whatever any of these things and um and i was like god oh, don't worry about it the writing is so good just fucking do it <laughs> and um and uh and, and yeah <laughs> well, I mean, so much of the show. Actually, wh- did you have to audition for that? I always assumed it was an offer, but maybe not. Insanely, it was. It was an offer. Uh, I, I, it's I, not they, insane at that point, I think. Uh, 
I go oh, fine. <laughs> but is you know you were saying you didn't know if you could do it. Is there a part of you that sort of wanted to audition? That would have definitely made it feel like it was more earned, mm. and that you were s- stepping into less of a kind of question or something that you didn't necessarily deserve to work in a way because you hadn't kind of been put through this arduous understanding of the part before you got to play it and um i remember thinking about that and and that being a kind of another a different kind of mental challenge of being given something which would strangely mean that you would fuck it up (laughs) well and i i remember hearing that bella was cast before you and so i wondered if you ever had a chemistry read with them of any no no wow they're out of their minds (laughs) You think people, you know, like they're 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 all getting away with crazy things. <laughs> so when did you first meet Bella? I met Bella. We were uh, a, a few weeks into shooting. Um, I had introduced myself to um, I'd, I I'd introduced myself to them like well before uh, we had started because I knew they were doing the part, and um, and then. Um, but we were shooting for the first episode. They don't show up until a few weeks in. You're right, yeah. And they came in for a haircut and on a day that we were shooting. And I was I got to I got to meet them and wow. and, and we just we just jumped in. Yeah. And kind of immediately understood how crazy that was and both had a very um uh strong instinct to take care of one another mm. you know i, I mean, was like god this must be a lot um i'm here i've been here a few weeks <laughs> and and like you know i'm here i'm here i'm here and 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 they were the same well uh your characters are getting to know each other on screen at the same time yeah. so it, it, it sort of naturally lends itself to that but there is also just an undefinable chemistry that sometimes you have with a co-star was it was it pretty instantaneous we were very shy with one another at the start which and i think understood that that would serve us well in terms of where the characters are at the beginning of uh uh, their relationship and where they end up and um i i I know that i'm kind of being precious about all things from like law and order criminal intent all the way to um the last of us but there were there was definitely a kind of guardian energy that was on our side um especially with remembering how nervous we were we both were and and how are we getting along enough do like like should we hang out what 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 do we need to do you know what i mean to um to to create the most incredible chemistry that you know <laughs> anchor this it. dystopia yeah exactly yeah. this dystopian show that at the center of which is this relationship um and uh and uh and and we just we just they're just like a super professional yeah i don't know how they could be at such a young age but um and that that guided me a lot and um kept me out of my head and um and and we just had just so much fun. Yeah. So much fun. It does seem like um, if everyone's going around talking like that on set, you're probably having fun. But, um, and I do, I find the show. Come and <laughs> I do find the show like ultimately hopeful in so many ways. But at the same time, Joel is someone who is, I mean, the worst thing that can happen to a parent happens to him. You know, yeah. and and aside from the zombie apocalypse, um, was it ever a, a hard place to be playing that character? I, I think it, it, at the start, it's exciting to have these very very dark things kind of anchor yourself to uh, a, a character. It's g- grounding. You've got you're not inventing a lot. You know, your daughter dying in your arms. You, there isn't a lot uh, left to the imagination, especially. Uh, uh, as a point of um, identifying a character that um, this like point of identity that is part of this character's arc. So that's very helpful actually. But in the physical labor of, of, of shooting, um, I definitely, I think at one point, you know, we were all very tired and um, we were like on some mountain in some barn and there were these like, you know, corpses hanging from hooks 
you know, I was like discovering that I was like in a community of cannibals or something like yeah. that. And I just remember being like, I wonder if this is fucking me up. Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I was like, I'm real tired. <laughs> And like we're all really drained, and now and I'm like, look, at, I just had this moment where I was staring at these prop pieces that were human, you know, remains, and just being like, huh, is this gonna mess with me? You probably also just like see clickers at the you know craft service tables, like you know. Yeah, hey, we would do rehearsals with these poor guys, and they couldn't see anything, so you'd oh. have to like take their hand and like <laughs> put them into position, and you know, and then get into your position, and then be like, ah, you know. <laughs> That's they would amazing. literally be like, ah, yeah, and then they'd be like, oh, you're blind, and you'd be like, here, here, here. They take your hand, and like, back to ones. <laughs> Again, you're you're having to well, actually. There's a lot of practical stuff in that show, but a lot of times you're reacting to things that you know you aren't seeing um, that get put in later via special effects. Are, are there times where just frankly you feel kind of silly? You know, it's 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 these are really two funny and unique examples because um, you would think um, uh, more with projects like these that so much of it isn't there, mm -hmm. and you'd be shocked to find out how much of it is um with these two particular uh with the mandalorian and the last of us um you know uh grogu is a very real looking doll and um so that really helped in terms of playing a scene and um and uh and there's all this very um incredible uh uh, visual effects work that's done in post, um, but with the stuff that they've already put on camera. Um, it's incredible, like makeup work and prosthetic work, and um, you know, uh, uh, exterior sets and built sets and stuff like that. So, yeah, like maybe we didn't see the giraffe, like we didn't see like the 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 giraffes like walking, you know, yeah. or the or we didn't see Boston necessarily <laughs> um but we saw a sky and we saw yeah. um uh most of it and there were i can't recall too often yeah like basically faking looking at the sunset just for my own uh information i'm curious when when you were shooting the first season of mandalorian did anyone ever refer to him as baby yoda or was that something the internet created i'll never tell <laughs> Because I was like, I don't know if that's, or when you learned, if you knew his name before we did, like even in season one. Well, we knew he wasn't Yoda. Okay. Um, uh, but we didn't know, um, we knew he looked like a baby Yoda. Yeah. And, um, and uh, but no, I think that, uh, that's a good question, actually. Yeah, it feels like it, it came after, like I don't think. After it was released. Yeah. It's a good question. <laughs> I don't know the answer to it. Uh, similarly, with um, the Last of Us, I mean, I mean, you had to have known you were doing something special. I remember it, it was so hard for me because I saw a long, long time, a couple weeks before it actually aired. Thank you, screeners from HBO. You had to live note with for months, knowing that you had just done one of the most epic episodes of television. Um, someone actually said. Uh, we need to find a way for Joel to get a car. Oh, great. Let's write the most heartbreaking episode of television ever. <laughs> uh, when you have something that's special and, and, you know, the episodes that follow, too, so much is happening. Um, is it hard to, like, keep it to yourself? Like, you have this really cool thing coming. Um, yeah, it's hard to keep it to yourself. <laughs> um, but I think that when it, it is that special, I kind of um, relish keeping it to myself because mm -hmm. I like the idea of... Um, it uh, uh, surprising pe surprising people, and um, the that episode long long time. Um, I, uh, Craig sent that to me uh, um, a couple of months before we started shooting, and um, I was excited about it, and I thought the scripts were incredible. But when I read that script. Mm -hmm. And people forget that Bella and I are in that episode. No, you are, we quite a bit. Fully, fully are. Um, and in flashback too. Yeah, yeah, totally. And there were 
many practical shooting days for us in that episode, <laughs> whether it ended up in the episode or not. But um, we were there. And uh, but the level of impact that that episode had with yeah. audiences was the level of impact that it had with me reading it. I wept mm. when I read it. I thought, and that is where I got like really fucking excited. Yeah. Because that it wasn't, you know, I just understood that it was, it wasn't just special. It was really special. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget when Craig sent me that script and I wrote him and I said, you know, and I, I was like, Craig, that's like one of my favorite things. That's like one of my favorite episodes of television that I've ever read. And he's like, oh my God, I'm so surprised. I thought you'd be mad because you weren't in it that much. And I was like, ah, don't, I was like, shut up. I was like, who cares? I mean, I do care. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's not like I'm like selfless or anything like that, but you know, I knew that I would have, you know, I, yeah, would, I, was, I knew I had a big part. I really didn't need it to be big the entire time. I actually do pick that episode because I think of how vital your scenes are. I think of the scene with you and, and Nick Offerman where like oh, nobody yeah. there likes each other, you know, and, and also because it was you, a heavenly yeah. day. That was Anna Torv, well, Murray Bartlett, yeah. Nick Offerman. I was just in like, I didn't, I, I was just. Yeah, it's super fun. And it tells us so much about the relationship with Anna Torv's character, too. And yeah. It's, like, extra heartbreaking. Um, and then the ending, like, the, you know, you and Bella close out that yeah. episode with that with that beautiful scene. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so yes, you are in it. Thank you. Damn it. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, you're shooting season two right now, aren't you? Uh, we're, we're about to. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So tell us everything that happens. I will. Yeah. <laughs> You can look it up. <laughs> um, I want to talk about some of the stuff you have coming out. And, and you've worked with so many amazing directors. You just worked with Almodovar in Strange Way of Life. Um, yeah. You've Dream. shot with Barry Jenkins, Ethan Cohen. Yeah. Like the most amazing directors. What, what do you hope for from a director when you show up? Oh. Oh, gosh. What an interesting. Uh, it, 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 it's never one thing, really. Um, I mean, you want to please them and, um, and, uh, and, and also I think what I want more than anything is to kind of understand what they're after and then, um, really make, uh, you know, my best contribution in terms of, um, realizing what their vision is and, um, and uh, it helps me that I guess the yeah like that like uh, I love a director who's like very d direct <laughs> and um, and just to kind of basically understand what the goal is and then um, make the most out of my space in that and and. I, that isn't to say like I'm this like empty vessel. I don't do whatever you want, and and I I definitely have like my opinions or ideas. But I think that the opinions and ideas are more related to understanding what they want, mm -hmm. as opposed to it being how I understand it. You know, does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. I'm so excited. I know you just got back from Sundance with Freaky Tales. Yeah. I cannot wait for this movie. It's really fun. Uh, I've been able to see Drive Away Dolls, which is so oh, much really? fun. <laughs> yes. And then I don't know. You also have, I don't, I don't actually, I don't know what's official, but are, you're doing Gladiator 2 maybe? Yeah, we shot Gladiator 2. You did two. shoot it. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. So Ridley Scott. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. He's the goat. The goat. <laughs> yeah. Talk about things i saw early in childhood oh yeah oh yeah the hunger when you were a kid i saw the hunger really? i own the hunger i <laughs> love the hunger david bowie Catherine Deneuve, susan sarandon um but you know alien it's yeah. like imprinted into if i was born in 75 and 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 that that is imprinted into all of our imaginations and then uh, again, I don't know what's official, but you might be joining the MCU in Fantastic Four. I've seen that reported as fact, but I never know if that's. You fact. said this was a ninety-minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's not reported. Tell as Tell the fact. truth. 
<laughs> There's like the past 90 minutes. Uh, like, well. By two minutes, but I have one final question. What's the final because, question? Because, and this, and this does tie into that, which is that being a part of all of these, you know, particular fandoms with Game of Thrones and Star Wars and Last of Us, and I would say even Kingsman, honestly, um, and, and possibly, you know, the MCU. You must have the most unique fan encounters. Uh, I'm curious what people want to talk about most when they see you. It changes. It, it, it you know it depends on where you are. If it you know you don't see a lot of my face in the Mandalorian, so it 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 depends. It, it will oscillate quite a bit between um, uh, Narcos, Javier Pena. Um, those are you the guy from Narcos or Hey Pena? <laughs> Um, and, uh, Game of Thrones to this day. Absolutely. Um, uh, Mandalorian. And, uh, there are instances of like, you hear somebody from inside their car, like you're walking by somebody in London and, and and, like going past their car and then hearing from inside their car being like, it's the fucking Mandalorian. (laughs) (laughs) And, um, and, uh, and uh, and uh, and 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 Joel Miller, uh, The Last yeah, of Us, sure. and um, and like TikTok videos. Yeah, I was unaware of fan cams memes until you and did. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Do people send you memes, or do they know not to bother you? They send me memes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a favorite? Uh, I like that LSD That's one. That's my favorite one. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. who doesn't want to look at Nicolas Cage like that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It says a lot. It tells a lot. There's so many different moods that that can work for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much acting you have to do to, to, to gaze at Nicolas Cage lovingly like that. On drugs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, well, again, I can't wait to see what you do next. I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank I'm you. Sorry. Thank you, everybody. It. It's such a pleasure. Yes, I'm 